Gamers and gamers, I'm back and uh, yep, yeah, there's been over another month and another month of pickups. I have um, quite a lot to show you actually, uh, um, uh, and it's a right mix of both old and new. Uh, the old just goes back as far as the days of the 1980s with the Sinclair microcomputers, but I'll show you that in a minute. First of all, um, I've got a, um, a plug and play console. Um, this is dirt cheap, this is only about £35 of eBay, and so watch your bits, generations. Uh, there's been a lot of um, criticism of this on the internet, uh, but I would say that's overrated or, or over exaggerated the criticism. It comes with two very good um, Mega Drive 6 button controllers with very good long leads. The unit is nice and small, it's about 100 games on there, and some good ones like. Licensed copy of um, Holy, Holy Diver and Ghouls and Ghosts and Knights Around and Bath, which is the main reasons why I got this, is to have licensed copies of those games really. Um, some people say the emulation is a bit choppy on it. Um, it's not perfect, it's not as good as what you get on the Witcher Pie by any means, but it's still pretty good enough on the HD um, uh, HD TV. So. I'm actually quite happy with this little machine, and if you see it cheap, it's well worth getting. I know there's like the RetroCade version, which is a better, you can add your own ROMs on it, but I can't see the point of that, you might as well just have a RetroPie with it. I only got this just to have licensed copies of, um, of well, a Holy Diver and Varth more than anything else, really, and Knights Around. So, uh, that's the main reasons why I got that myself, really, and if you see it cheap, I highly recommend it, really. Okay. Um, not exactly gaming, but sort of related. I have got some uh, figures to show. Um, these by I, uh, an English company um, called Eagle Moss, who makes um, miniature figures out of lead normally or, or resin these days, and um, they do taller figures and uh, so they do all the small ones which come with magazines usually in the UK or they do bigger ones which is what this is and this was like half price so this was about 20 quid online and it's it's a tribute to the Alien vs Predator SNES game it's the Alien and Predator figures and uh, the actual figures are modelled on the on the sprites from the game and you can see, even see that like, little SNES background there, which is a really nice set. And from the same store, was I got these figures? I got from the uh, graphic novel Alien Stronghold. I got the, the alien figure there. And if you what you if you look up, uh, if you, I mean, I got to get this graphic novel. But what's cool about this is the alien was bred on human DNA, and so it's like it. It's inbred, it can't hurt humans, it has to protect them. But it got, it's got a character, you know, quite a human, humanistic character. It carries a machine gun and smokes a cigar. So I will be getting at that graphic novel at some point, but I just thought it's very unusual. It's quite common to have models of alien figures, but not one holding a machine gun and smoking a cigar. And this one again I got because it's gaming related, based on Alien Isolation. It is of uh, Amanda Ripley. So again, these weren't a lot of money, these were about, um, I think they're about 15 quid each for figures on their own, so I thought that was alright actually. It's trying to find room to a storm, that's the next thing I'll have them. Okay, let's turn to the games. Alright, what should we do? Um, oh yeah, I forgot the, to do the name of the game. Okay, this one is a toughie. You got to substitute a word for a word that's very similar. So this one's called Universe Battle. So you got to substitute that word for another one, and the same with Battle for another similar word, and you'll get the name of the game. Now, because it's such a tough game, it's not. Um, I mean, this is a tough game. This is this one is. I've actually got the game to show you as a part of my pickup. So that's a big clue: is that I will be showing the game as part of my pickup. So you, you should be able, most of you should be able to get it. It's quite. A, it's not a common game, but. Uh, I thought I'd make it a bit more challenging for you guys this week, or this month. Okay, let's hope it doesn't fall my head. Okay, um, old games. 
Um, there's a BBC um, cult TV series, there's actually two series, of called The Young Ones with Rick Mayer and Adrian Edmondson. And uh, there was a video game based on it, released in the UK uh, for the microcomputers, and this is for Spectrum 48 and the 128K Spectrum. Um, anyone out there, if you've not seen the young ones, and you need to, just go out and buy the DVDs cheap or whatever, it's well worth it. Um, it's um, alternative comedy at its best. And if you grew up in the 80s like I, I did, um, it's so much part of the British culture, but it's definitely worth it. Even, I'm sure you guys in the West and Americans will enjoy it as well. It's really good fun. Okay, um, other games. Okay, let's do a Wii, get those out of the way. I have, uh, this is like a pound, um, I think it's a UK exclusive, I could be wrong. It's classic British mo uh, British motor racing. So it's got classic British motor cars that have gone bust now. So it's got Austin, Wiley, Rover, MG and a few like that. Um, it's an okay, cheap and um, cheerful Wii pack, um, racing game. So uh, a, um, a Wii Zapper type first person shooter called Marines. Don't see it so often, it's quite a rare game over here. Um, but again, it wasn't a lot of money, it's about four or five quid off eBay. Uh, this is like a, another a singing music type game. ABBA, you can dance. I do like ABBA, and I'm a bit of a sucker for a sing star game. So, to get this game that was only on the Wii, why not? Sing it, two quid. <coughs> Excuse me. I right, turn to a PSP. I've got a couple of cheap games, some sports titles that are about a pound each. EA Fight Night Round 3, there's no harm in the boxing game. And Pez 2008, again, I like to pick up the 2008 games. Because uh, that's when my daughter was born, but also I tend to try to get the Pez games on all the, on all the Sony platforms as they come out when they're dirt cheap. Um, I prefer it to FIFA. Okay, other games. Uh, I've got one Dreamcast to show you. This is a, a new Dreamcast game produced by a company called Josh Prod. And um, you can buy them, for, for, I think they got um, licensed stores in America online and also in, in, in Europe there's a store in France that can ship, sell this to you cheap so you don't need to pay, pay eBay prices. But I've got this for about 30 quid shipped from France and it's Battle Crust. It's like a modern bullet hell shooter, and the shooters on the Dreamcast are always collectible and end up going up in money. So I've not had a chance to play it yet. Um, it's all new and sealed. I will open it, but yeah, um, nice, very nice. Not often you get to see brand new Dreamcast games. Uh, old school again, might as well, on the NES, complete and uh, with manual. Uh, Gunsmoke, classic Capcom, top down. I guess it, oh, it's a third person shooter of sorts. In the old style, properly, I guess you could say so. But it's a classic, um, it's a really good game. Um, I'm sure everyone has played that. Uh, got a couple, I've got, I'm sure I've got more than one PC game, but I've got one PC game to show you at hand. Don't normally collect PC games, but again, it was cheap. Um, it's called um, I think it's called Zombie Panic. It's got this is a Polish version. It's basically like zombies on a plane, and it's a um, quite a cheap um, sh um, first person person shoot with zombies type game. It was about a pound in the charity shop. Don't see it that often, and I thought, well, it's zombies, why not? Okay, um, I've got a game on the GameCube. Again, this was cheap, but it's by IDOS, it's about £4 in CX, don't see it that often. It's Ace Golf, it's got quite good reviews actually for a golfing game. And uh, yeah, um, don't see um, that many uh, GameCube games in a while, so 
If it's one that's exclusive to a system, which that is, I will pick it up. Okay, um, got quite a few PS4 and stuff, but before I show you those, let's do the Switch. Oh, yeah, okay. Imported from the States, I've got a Penny Punching Princess. This is about £35 by the time they added bloody import duties. Um, it's it's part BM up, and I think it's a part RPG as well. Um, by NIS of America, sold out on their store, but still nice to get for a Switch. And uh, for a Switch, got Minecraft. I know it's a bit of a generic game, but this has got a Super Mario mashup um, um, uh, character sprites, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, um, on the Switch, I also got Lego DC Super Villains. This is like the exclusive to um, game, which not only comes with a Lex Luthor minifigure, but also comes with a steel book case. So, quite nice to have a steel book <laughs> case of a game. It comes with a cardboard sleeve. It hasn't got the plastic case with it as well, it's just a steel book in here uh, and the figure. So, um, yeah, a bit different. I like to get, uh, I'm interested in Switch games that are come with unusual packaging and I collect all the Lego games for the Switch as well as PS4. Okay, another Switch game which is uh, exclusive to PlayAsia.com. It's um, it's like a mech um, in flying in space shooting type game. So it's a bit of a, well I'm not quite put the hell but almost. It is RXN Raging I think it's called. Yeah, RXN Raging. Play exclusive, play Asia exclusive about just on the 30 quid. It comes with a CD soundtrack and still book, I think. And yeah, another nice Switch set. Um, I'll just stick with Nintendo for a while. Okay, um, on the DS, uh, we've got a Valkyrie profile game called Convent of Plume, another RPG. Um, this was about 15 quid off eBay, got that for a good price. Um, for about 15 quid as well, I got Beautiful Joe Double Trouble. That was um, a Beautiful Joe game on the system. Um, when I was in um, CEX back where, when I was on holiday in um, Great Yarmouth, I saw this Mega Man 5 Battle Network. Uh, Double Team DS. I'm slowly collecting all the DS games, or Mega, Mega, Mega Man DS games. I think it's about half a dozen or so. Um, so that's number one for a collection. That's about, I think that's about 22 quid. All complete. This was a tenner, and I'm surprised I didn't have it already. It was Tekken 3D Prime Edition. This is a, a really good fighting game to have on the 3DS. Um, highly recommended. Uh, this is another game that looks interesting. Um, it's a new IP. Um, they got it cheap in Smith's Toy Shop. I think that's about half price, about 15 quid. Uh, Dylan's Dead Heat uh, Breakers. Um, it's got like um, um, shade cell drawing type an uh, animation. So, um, yeah, different. Okay. Just turn, just get a 360 out of the way. Uh, this was a pound. Uh, Borderlands double game add-on pack. So it's got the DLC on disc, but it doesn't come with a game. It's just for DLC. This was only released on the Xbox 360 in terms of a on the disc. You can get it as DLC downloadable content for a PSV version, but to get a physical copy of site 360 exclusive, I think. Um, it might be on the Game of the Year edition, but I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, it was only a pound, so I thought for my 360 collection. Uh, Minecraft Story Mode again, the complete adventure. As we know, um, uh, Telltale are f just about folded, gone bust. So um, I do like these Telltale games. I know that they can get a bit samey but that's telltale games that's what it is that's what you play for and there's so many good ones out there so I'm, I'm getting them both on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 so 
and PS4 one. So I've pretty much got all of them, but there's one or two which I still got to get. Uh, a Kinect game which I got because, it, well, it's Twister, classic um, floor game. So I thought it's a bit different. Again, it wasn't a lot of money; it's about a couple of quid in the CEX. So do see it that often, so I thought I might as well a lot of money. Talking about CEX, I, I caught them slipping. Um, they had this for only three pound fifty, and it is a original. Snares controller. I'll take that all day for three pound fifty. Um, uh, on the label, they they said NES controller. Uh, so maybe they just picked got the wrong code off uh, of their website and stuck it on. But they didn't mention anything when I asked for it, and and it's all neat and clean and fully working. So for three fifty to have another original Snares controller, yes. Okay. Before I go into PlayStation games, let's go through some strategy guides, shall we? Okay. Uh, sadly, uh, news came out recently that Prima Games are ending their production, so come the new year, they, uh, they won't be producing any new strategy guides, which is a real shame. Um, I know strategy guides are a bit uh, old hat. I mean, and to be honest, if I need a tip or a solution, I do go to YouTube first of all. Uh, but it's nice to have the strategy guide for a game that you love really and uh, it's nice to have a look at the artwork and stuff and and I try to get them when I see them reasonably priced or not full price um, so these were not too bad so I got Prima God of War on, uh, for £7.50 so that's not a bad price or new and for about £14 not quite retail but still um, not a bad price. The limited edition collector's guide for God of War as well. These always go up man in money once they sell out. So nice to have that for a collection. And Fight Monty. Um, this, this is a Prima again. Assassin's Creed's Odyssey in collector's edition. So good to get that. Uh, there'll be a few independent companies still producing a few strategy guides. So they're not completely gone. And and I do have. A shit ton of them actually, it's just finding room to storm, which is a problem. Um, in the past, I did try to get a strategy guide for every game I owned, but obviously, that's um, that's I forgot that <laughs> I left that goal a long time ago. But I do try to get the guides for the games I know I do really like more than anything else, really. And if I see them dirt cheap, I will pick them up as well. So, uh, yeah, a bit of history. Okay, let's turn to some old school games again let's turn to the Saturn okay well no, actually before so I got one PC Engine Hue card game and that is Tiger Healy okay this is a obviously it's a top-down helicopter classic um, shooting game um, uh, by Taito you can get, get it I believe on the, some of the Taito combinations of the the PS2, or, uh, but uh, still, it's nice to have uh, a physical edition of the original game on the PC Engine. This is about fifteen pounds, including shipping from from Japan, which is not bad actually. And uh, you know, if you want to get into PC Engine games, I highly recommend getting the Retro Freak um, all in one console because obviously they play the Hue cards. And at a minute in the UK, Fun Stop. Uh, I've got all their Retro Freak machines at like half price, so about £99 for uh, a system that is superior to Retro 5 in my opinion. I mean you can even use the same cheat codes from the Retro 5 on this system. You just have to change the name of the file format. I mean there's tips on how to do it on, on the internet, but highly superior to Retro 5. So if you want to get into PC Engine connecting or the plane, uh, it's cheaper to get, get that to play your Hue card games on than it is to try to get a modded um, a PC Engine console. Uh, that's, you know, because you've got to think about all the power conversion if you get a Japanese console and all sorts of things and and uh, make sure it's RGB modded or whatever else. But this, you know, if you get Retrofreak, it's HDMI, so, you know, got that problem solved and also you can play the other games, of course. And obviously you've got cheats and save states. Well, not you know not so much cheats on the PC engine, but uh, on the other games you will will have cheats. Uh, but yeah, Tiger Healy. 
Okay, I've got a few also Saturn games from from Japan. Um, got this horror game. Um, it's like a point and click one. Dark Seed. You know, may recognise the art style. Yep, that's HR Guy. Go from the Alien franchise. Uh, there is a sequel to this, Dark Sea 2, which is quite rare. Um, and so I'll probably try to pick that up when I can for a fair price, but this wasn't expensive. Again, I think it's about a 15 quid mark with shipping. Uh, in the U. Uh, yeah. I've got uh, a uh, classic mech shooter, Gun Griffin. This is a Power UK copy, all complete. This is about. I think it's about £11 pound mark off eBay. But in Japan, they did come out with a sequel, Gun Griffin 2. So, yeah. This wasn't not money either. This is about the same money, actually, I think it was. Okay, um. Right, this classic Neo Geo beat him up. Um, this was ported to the PS2 as well, but that copy is quite. Was it PS1? No, PS1. It was ported to a PS1 as well. But uh, that copy is quite more expensive. It's cheaper to get it on the Saturn and you get it complete with uh, the Megabyte expansion um, card. So this was about 30 quid with shipping. This is um, Wakey Wakey 7. It's a very uh, cutesy, cartoony type beat em up. Uh, yep, yeah, obviously the. Uh, Neo Geo game, um, original is really expensive. You can get a um, this on a Nintendo Switch as a, a download copy if you want to, which I do own. Uh, but it's also nice to have original copy as always on the Saturn. Okay, um, a a in space well a you know beat em up game, um, it's sort of a sci-fi type one called Galaxy Fight Universal Warriors. Um, again, I can't remember if this was if this came out to the West or not. I um, if it did, it's really expensive. That's why I got the Japanese copy. But then this wasn't too much money. It was about a twelve quid mark. Okay, for, for under a tenner, I got a, a, a flight simulating shooting game, Wing Arms, on the Saturn, all complete. Um, and another beat em up, which is a classic beat em up, Last Bronx, all complete. Um, again, they were about 10 quid mark each, which is a really good price for Saturn games. Um, there are a few more Japanese uh, Saturn games that I'm after. I thought I had to complete my, my want list, but there are a few others which I'm gradually getting. Um, like I said, Doxy 2, but there are some repo games I'm going to get because of. Originals are way too expensive, but I'll show those another day. Uh, one Xbox One game, well, I say Xbox One, we Xbox 360, Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year Edition. Uh, yeah, I'm collecting all these games that are released on both the Xbox One and Xbox 360. It's just a bit different. Like, we've got that sort of packaging. Well, I was saying that the first few that came out were like Xbox 360 length boxes. But now they've sort of gone to like the Xbox One style boxing, so. But uh, yeah, that was about 13 quid new off at or something like that. It wasn't a lot of money. Okay, uh, let's have a bit of a distraction from games. Got some amiibo cards. Now you may say, what are amiibo cards? Well, um, another YouTuber, Grub Gun, has showed some of these off. Basically, uh, you can buy, uh, they're all obviously unofficial bootlegs, but they all do a job. You can buy like, plastic trading card size um, cards for all the, the Amiibos that contain the near field communication data on them. So if you want to play, you know, Super Mario Bros. or, or the, uh, the Breath of the Wild, um, game on the Switch or on the Wii U and you don't want to use the, the Amiibo or you've got the Amiibos but you don't want to unbox them you can just buy these cards and they do the same thing so 
you can buy the entire set of all the Zelda cards, which I've done, which were about £12, including the case and shipping. And it's like 22 cards there, for all the characters, all the Amiibos. And you just um, use them instead. And uh, I've got them saved on my Switch already, and uh, they do a job. And so for 12 quid, I thought, that's not a nice, a nice thing to have. Um, you can get them for, you know, the Splatoon characters and, and other Mario characters and stuff as well. I thought I might as well get them while you can, just in case you tend to clamp stand on them if they can somehow, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's turn to... Uh, let's do some order, shall we? Start off with PS1 games. So we're doing PlayStation games, so we're starting off with a PS1. Okay. Got these games in the charity shop. They had them for £2 each, and I didn't have them, so point blank. Passage um, light gun game. I do have a CRTV, so I can play this, and uh, two quid, that's a steal. Uh, Buster Move 3DX, uh, again, my first Buster Move game on the PlayStation. Again, two quid, a steal. And these other two games are uh, Japanese exclusives. This one is a bit of an RPG type game with uh, um, it's all in Japanese unfortunately so I've got no way of replaying this without a walkthrough but I just liked the, the art style and I got it for the under a tenner imported from Japan because I just just saw the, uh, the art on the eBay listing and I thought that's interesting I might pick it up while it's dirt cheap it's called Tenshi Dome T-E-N-S-H-I and Dome is D O M E I. You see, there's a little boy with a kind of massive robot mecha, mecha, um, or mech character next to him. So it's like an unusual Japanese type uh, shooting game. Um, I will add the label with a name on the side eventually when I get mounted, but I just wrote it on a piece of paper on the back for now because otherwise, you know, it's no way of remembering the title. Okay, this game. It's based based on the, the Japanese um, for anime, I suppose, that came out in the also in the eighties. Based on like superhero type characters, like G Force and stuff like that. And it's called uh, Bokan Tuipatsu Doro Wombo. So it's a bit of a um, it's it's like a, a cutesy cut em up shooter based on these sort of superhero type characters. Um, this was about 15 quid imported from Japan, you can only get it from Japan. But again, this one you don't need a language, it's fine, you can play it, it's another nice cute shoot em up. Ok, let's turn to the PS2. Alright, I've got some uninteresting Filler. Uh, I do like my scene star games, so take that, that's like under a pound. Uh, I'll show it later. Barnyard, two quid from CX. Um, I think it's based on a. Is it okay? I don't think this is it's a cheap movie, but still, I thought it may become a hidden gem at some point in the future, so for PS2, two quid, I thought why not. Uh, I only got this game because I'm not too mad on the first film, but the second film does look good, so I'll probably end up getting that. But it's Jumanji. Uh, this was produced or um, published or developed by Blast. And Blast did a lot of games that were like European exclusives. So Jumanji, it's, um, it's basically lots of mini games really, more than anything else. But again, that was like a, a pound or something from CX, so I thought for money, why not? Uh, another scene star game for about a couple of quid. Scene star summer party. I'm not going to spend any time on that. Um, the third, based on the third mummy movie, the mummy tomb of a dragon emperor. This is actually um, was from developed by Sierra Games, and I think it's like one of the last games they did. So um, yeah. I don't know if it's any good or not, but certainly well worth a pick up if you see it cheap. Uh, another IDOS game, Legacy of Kane Defiance. This is about four quid, I think, off CX. 
Urban Rain. I think this is about a five. I can't remember where I got this from though. Another beat him up game, Nanko. It's been on the want list for a long time. This is about six quid from CX. Uh, it's quite a good Star Trek game. Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. I don't like Voyager. I think it's one of the worst Star Trek franchises. But this is quite a good action um, adventure type game. Really going around shooting Borg and all sorts. Okay, uh, Japanese game for a PS2. Again, this is one which is a bit of a. It's like a horror game set in space. It's called Phase Paradox. Um, there's a bit of there's a bit of English language in it, so I think I'm pretty sure this is quite playable. Uh, again, it was quite cheap. It was about seven or eight pound with shipping to the UK from Japan. But it's one of those games. So I'm sure over time, as people get into Japanese collecting more, uh, it will be more sought after. So um, yeah. Um, it's definitely a time to get into collecting games from Japan in a moment. It's definitely right now because Japan is a massive country really into gaming. They've got so much gaming stock, used retro stock out there. And most of the games, apart from obviously the rarer titles, are really cheap, even with shipping and stuff. So, um, um, and if you can't get them in the West, uh, it's a good, you know, obviously it's not so much more choice, but often they're cheaper to some of the Western counterparts as well, really. So it's well worth getting into Japanese uh, collecting games. So don't be put off uh, collecting games from Japan. Um, it's, you know, and they always... <laughs> I've not had a single thing from Japan go missing in a post, and it's always good condition. I've never had any problems with conditional things from Japan. But Japanese do look after their stuff. So, um, yeah, so... Um, and... Um, Get them while you still can, while they're still reasonably cheap. I mean, some people do go to Japan just to go with trips and all around the, uh, all around the, the I see the used game stores. They tend to go around the well, knockoff stores, whatever they're called, um, hard offs and stuff like that, because um, you spoil for choice for games, and they really as cheap as chips out there. So, um, if I had, a, I mean, I've been collecting get Japanese games for a long time, so I've got most of the games I want. They are about another. 30 games I'm after but I think I've costed it out it'll be still cheaper to import those than it would be to go to Japan and, and try to pick them up myself from hard off system it's still um, uh, cheaper to, to import them by mail really but saying that if it, if it wasn't for my wife and the kid my daughter I would love to go out there and uh, explore Japanese culture and do bits out there like some people that have done um, there's this channel called Retro Gamer Girl um, Australian channel. Um, she and her boyfriend have got a, a very respectable collection of quality games, and they usually go to to Japan at least once a year, and they always have lots of pickup videos around all the hard offs and stuff. So um, yeah, that we put off collecting games from Japan. It's well worth it. Okay. Um, all right. Going to the PS4. Okay, and I know some people uh, like um, oh um, oh god um, oh guys names uh, oh I know some people are you know just really into collecting just a modern system so that's fair enough. Okay, um, on the PS4, Mother Gunship. Uh, so another. Um, crazy type shooting on game um, again it's not huge numbers released in um, so uh, this does, can, could be a, a hidden gem I suppose it was a lot more only about 15 quid PlayStation VR games I'm going for a complete VR set and there are about another 30 odd games on my want list and I do own at least 40 VR games so the PlayStation VR if you look outside of the stores, because there's not much in the stores, but if you look online, you get a lot of choice uh, of um, content. So Syndrome, another type sci-fi horror game, I think it is. This one is with shooting emits. Um, Zone of Enders again. This was about sixteen quid, I think. New, got this VR compatible too. Uh, 
Uh, Injustice 2 Legendary Edition, I've got this one for about 12 quid from Cash Converters. Another VR game, Apex Construct. I think that was about a 15 quid mark. Uh, new, I got Gravel, another driving game. Uh, this was about 12 quid. The deluxe edition of Far Cry 5. It's got all the you know, soundtrack and, and the art or map or whatever else, all the included bits. Another cheap racing game, On Rush Day 1 edition. Um, not a bad game. If you see it cheap, pick it up. Uh, I got it for a tenner from Smith's. Uh, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm the Trilogy on the PS4. So this was on the PS3, but it's nice to get a modern port. I think that's about 15 quid used. Got, got a nice, in like new condition copy of Yakuza 6 the Steelbook Edition. Um, it's got the nice art book with it. So that was about 15. This was about 15 quid as well, which is a steal. It's an limited edition of Disgaea 5. It's got the uh, art book and, and soundtrack again. Okay, uh, got this for about 17 quid from the game. Um, Sonic Mania Plus. Um, we all know about this, there's nothing to say about that. Uh, I've got the still book, limited edition, still book edition of Lego Vins um, again for the PS4 this time as well as the Switch. Okay, uh, these games are less common. Uh, these ones you will not see in the stores in UK. So first of all, the PlayStation VR, The Invisible Hours. This is like a murder mystery game. So um, I assume when you play this all the way through, that's it. I mean, you'll know who a murderer is. So. I don't, I don't think they change a the murderer randomly or anything on it, but still it's a VR game. It came out in the States, not in the UK, but you can get it from Europe and it's all in English anyway. England, and it's multi-language on the back, so if you're into collecting your VR games, get that. Uh, I got that from Italy for about 30 quid. Not cheap, but that's the only way of getting it. Um, right. This is a... Um, Strictly, um, strictly um, limited uh, game. It's like a, a mech in space bullet hell type shooting game called Stardust Galaxy Warriors. Um, again, it's like only from strictly limited games, so I do like my shooting games. Uh, this game is a bit of a it's from limited run. It's it's like an RPG one with sci-fi type elements, and it's uh, cartoony, so it's quite cute and funny. Um, Cosmic Star Heroin. Got that for retail from each one themselves. And finally, last but not least, um, it's a bit of a rude game, I suppose. It's Dead or Alive Extreme Free Fortune. Uh, this um, is a Korean copy, which will play in English. Uh, it's got English language all the way through in terms of subtitles and it's, uh, and text. Um, the girls speak in Japanese and stuff, but still, uh, that doesn't matter. All the text is in English, so it's uh, you know it's perfectly playable for us UK gamers. And it only got a, a Eastern release. It never got released in uh, Europe or the States, I believe. So the only way of getting this is to import it and. Uh, Hong Kong edition is super expensive, the Japanese edition is not that cheap, and this one wasn't that cheap either from Korea, this was about £40 off eBay, brand new, but yep, yeah, I've got all the Dead Alive uh, beach volleyball games, so I have to get the uh, game as well. Um, what's a bit pervy about this game is that, um, as well as the boob motion, you've got the bum cheek motion, and you can... At the end of the day, once you finish gaming on it, um, the girls can rest on their bed and change positions, and you can move the camera around to examine their assets. Uh, yeah, are we? 
I really don't understand the, uh, the, the, why it's a thing. Because if you, uh, I guess it's you know it's just it's the teasing bits about it that people like. I suppose I don't know. It's like it's so much so much easier other ways of looking at um, porn, obviously, out there. But um, but it's a thing still. And uh, I'm not, I'm not got it because of that. I've just got it because it's a, you know it's a it's a part of the Dead or Alive franchise and beach volleyball thing. But still, it's a thing. Okay, that's it, guys. That's all my pickups. So quite a lot this month, and uh, uh, next month is obviously Christmas coming up and so forth. So I will do another pickup, um, hopefully before Christmas, or it might I might leave it to afterwards. I don't know. I have to see how it goes really. But as always, guys, have a go at uh, name the game. I did show the game in there. The clue again is Universe Battle. So if you substitute those words for some words that are very similar, you'll get the title of this game, which was shown. Uh, but as always, guys, leave comments, like, subscribe, and until next time, take care and bye. Take care.